Greetings. Today we join Columbus, Christopher Columbus as he begins his monumental, monumental voyage across the Atlantic Ocean. Columbus began planning the voyage almost immediately he, after he signed a contract with the with Queen King as King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. He would sail from the Spanish port city of Palos Os de la Frontera. The main occupation of this port was fishing. Queen Isabella required the populace of the town to cooperate with Columbus. Martin Alonso Pinzon and his brother Vincente Yanez Pinzon were instrumental in aiding Columbus in the task. The small flotilla would consist of three ships, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. The Santa Maria was the largest of the three ships. Owned by Juan de la Cosa, the ship was a type of craft called a carrick. These ships were used for longer voyages and had either three or four masts. It would have been about 58 feet long, 18 feet wide, with a draft of about 10 feet. The crew would have numbered about 40 men. Columbus would command this ship. The Pinta was the fastest ship. It was a caravel and would have had two masts. The Spanish used these ships for exploration. The ship would have been about 56 feet long with a berth of about 17 feet. It had had draft of about 8 feet and would have carried a crew of about 8. The Nina was also a, car uh, also a caravel. The Nina was about 50 feet long with a berth of 16 feet. It had a draft of about 7 feet and carried a crew of 24. The Nina became Columbus's favorite ship. The fleet set sail on August the 3rd, 1492. The rudder on the Pinta broke, necessitating that the crew make makeshift repairs by securing it with ropes. The repairs lasted until the ships reached their first destination, the Canary Islands, on August the 12th, 1492. Columbus and his crew would remain on the island for a month, allowing workmen to repair the rudder and re-rig the Nina's sails. The ships departed on September the 6th, 1492. Columbus stop and the Canaries would begin a long tradition of Spanish galleons stopping there on their way to the New World. This episode is based upon my book, Colonial American History Stories, 1215 through 1664. The articles in the book relate in much more detail on the saga of Ferdinand and Isabella, as well as Christopher Columbus's voyage. Um, the book is the first of a seven-volume series. This book concludes... Almost 300 history stories presented in a timeline that begins in 1215 with the signing of the Magna Carta to the printing of the first Bible in colonial America in 1664. The Journal of Historic Events marks the beginning of the United States and serves as a wonderful guide of American history. A visit to my website, www.mossyfeetbooks, will provide sample chapters excerpted from each of my 130-plus titles, as well as links to purchase the books at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple, and other online book retailers. While you're on the website, subscribe to it by registering your email address in the subscribe button. I will email you. I will now email you whenever I publish a new book or another type of content. I post about three to five times weekly on the site. The posts include podcast episodes, YouTube videos, and well other content. You also receive notice of when I publish a book, which is about eight to ten times per year. You can also purchase books direct from me. Residents of southeastern Indiana can find my books in Batesville at the Walnut Street Variety Shop on George Street. This podcast will also appear in video format on YouTube and the Mossy Feet Books channel. Subscribe to the channel for more great content or subscribe to my Facebook page, Stories of American History. I hope you enjoyed this podcast and thank you for listening.